Hey, I'm Mike and welcome to Need to Make It. This piece and this piece look to be the same, but they are not the same on the inside. Let's see if it's really what's on the inside that counts. So stick around. So what we're looking at here is parts that made an appearance in a previous testing video. This one made an appearance in the four point bending test and this has 30% infill and it is PETG carbon fiber. These are 25 millimeters tall, 20 millimeters thick, 250 millimeters long. This one has the exact same settings, but it is 150 millimeters long. This also made an appearance in a previous video. Now what we're looking at here is experimental parts. So these are the ones that I'm really interested to see how well they perform in comparison to these ones here. These ones and these ones actually weigh the exact same. Continuous, 48 grams. Experimental, 48 grams. The long continuous, 77 grams. Long experimental, 78 grams. I'm off by a gram. I think it's somewhere in between, but forgive me, I am off by a gram. So these parts are not anything close to the same on the inside. So let me show you exactly what I mean. So we have the walls and the tops and the bottoms. In this case, because these are printed as structural parts, the walls are pretty thick. I believe they are 2.4 millimeters thick. Normally, we would have our infill in here. This is not to scale. So the infill serves a few purposes. It prevents collapse, so it does well in compression, and it also supports the top layer. Now, it does probably provide some structural integrity Depending on the nozzle size, depending on the extrusion width that you use for your infill, depending on the infill type, those will all change the amount of integrity that the infill provides to your overall part. Now, I've done some testing on 3D printed solid parts, and I have been impressed with how strong those solid parts are. So what I was looking for was a way to not add any more weight, but instead try and get the properties of a solid part without actually having a solid part. That doesn't seem possible, but again, this is experimental, so we'll see whether it is or not. So I'm taking all of this blue area, all of the infill, and I am instead repurposing it like this. And I also added in a central web as well, just for a little bit of prevention for collapse. So all of this, which was fairly flexible, is now going around the perimeter where I believe it should be for the strongest part. And also we have these curves on the interior, which we know is better than having straight or square corners. There are at least three ways that I can hollow a part like this, at least that I can think of. In the case of our rail example, we can create our outside rail profile at 25 millimeters by 20 millimeters, and then we can draw in an ellipse. And depending on the print orientation, we can add in a vertical or a horizontal web. Now the web really isn't a requirement, but it does help to support that most difficult area up on the top. And it should also help a little bit for our bending test. We can then cap one end and then I like to fill it the inside sharp edges for the strongest possible parts. We can mirror that cap and the fillets to the other side using the central plane. In this case, as long as we have enough walls and tops and bottoms in the slicer, there should be no infill. The next method which can be used on any part is the hollow command in Fusion 360. Now normally when we use this command we would want to remove some faces, but in this case we don't want to do that. So what we need to do is go over and change our selection to body. This is going to make sure that we're selecting the entire part. Now we can select hollow and we can set the value to the number that we'd like. And there is also an option to add a rounded shell doesn't work particularly well on this object, so I will go in and add the curves I'd like to see on the inside. Like the rail that we just did, this one will have no infill, which could be a problem for printing this particular part because we do lack support. The next option is probably the easiest of them all, and that is to do the hollowing directly in the slicer. We won't get those nice rounded interior corners. So maybe if this technique is actually any good, a rounded corner option in the slicer could be added. For now, we can change the walls, tops and bottoms to whatever we'd like to see. And then we can modify the infill to something like the lightning infill. 
And we also need to make one other change or our parts will be mostly solid. And that is to uncheck ensure vertical shell thickness. Now we're gonna have thick walls and we're gonna have a very minimal amount of infill to provide the support that we need. The goal is to waste as little time and material on the infill as possible and to keep the walls and the tops and bottoms as thick and as dense as we can. This is our test setup. It is pretty much the same as two videos ago. And this is a four point bending test. Somebody mentioned why is this not three point bending? And that's just because I did not want to have too much stress in the central point. I wanted to spread it out a little bit better on these 3D prints. And that was to make sure that I didn't encourage premature failure when I put too much pressure in one spot. And I am standing away from this because in the previous video, this one went flying and just about hit me. Well, I spent 15 minutes trying to find the other piece and I can't. The only reasonable explanation is that it's completely disintegrated. I'm gonna set up the experimental. I found the parts. It's taken a nice gouge out of something. I'm assuming that's my ceiling. So let's have a look at the results of the deflection and brake test. So what I have here is continuous and experimental. I have the set increments at 10 kilograms, 20 kilograms, 30. Then I jumped way up 100 kilograms, 125, 150 and max deflection. At the smallest loading, it was very difficult to distinguish a difference between the two. There's a slight improvement starting at 20 kilograms and then 30 kilograms, again, very slight improvement. Now, if we jump up to 100 kilograms, we're starting to see quite a big difference in deflection. This is in millimeters, 6.6 .6 and 8.3 millimeters. Then 125, 9.1 millimeters for experimental, 11.6. 150 kilograms, 12.8, and then 16.1. And then we have max deflection, so the continuous deflected more overall than the experimental did. So again, we have max deflection in millimeters and then we have the max load. So this is where we saw a pretty big difference. Max load for continuous 151.9 kilograms and experimental 175.7 kilograms. And if you're not a kilogram person, that's 52.36 pounds of difference between them or overall 386.8 five, four pounds in order to take it to the breaking point. So what I did was I took all of the values except for the breaking point because they were so different and I took the average deflection per kilogram. So the more deflection, the less rigid the part is. So the continuous with the infill had 0 0.085 millimeters per kilogram and the experimental 0 0.073 millimeters per kilogram of deflection. So in the deflection and brake test, the experimental has performed better. And if we take a look at max load, we have a 15% improvement. So by no means is this perfected. This went straight from concept to me printing it to testing. And you can see that I even missed out on having some of the small rounded corners in here as well, which may have helped a little bit. But realistically, this little web in here, because it's on the neutral axis, 
doesn't really provide any additional integrity to this part. It really needed to be going vertical as far as how it's being tested. So I don't believe that this was advantageous at all in this particular test and probably not in the torque test either. All right, now we're on to the torsion test. So I have the continuous part. Now we'll set up the experimental. Now since this is an experiment, I thought I would print this one vertical rather than print it horizontal. I don't know whether it will have any impact whatsoever. So it's a similar style of fracturing. This one is more condensed and of course is rotated 90 degrees from the other one. I have a little bit of bonus footage here. This is a request from a viewer. This is Black Pet G. It's the exact same print settings as the other continuous part, but this is just basic Pet G. This was apparently urgent. I managed to find some of it. And this has been my experience with PET G printed in this way, is all of a sudden it will just shatter. But you can see that it has quite a high capacity. So let's take a look at the results of the torsion testing. So we have continuous infill, we have the experimental horizontally printed and the experimental printed vertically. We have 29.9 Newton meters for continuous with the infill. Experimental horizontally printed 33.3, .3. experimental vertically printed 31.9. So here we have a 11% improvement, slightly more than 11%. And here we have nearly a 7% improvement. So there is a difference between these two. Now I realize I'm only testing a few samples. Realistically, I need to test far more samples and take the average of all of them. This is, again, just conceptual for now. I am happy to do more testing on this stuff if you guys would like to see it. I think we can call this a success. In deflection, the unfilled experimental part performed better than the infilled continuous part, which means that it is more rigid. And for braking, we saw a 15% improvement in the total capacity. In the torsion testing, we had between about 7% and 11% improvement, depending on the print orientation as well. The good thing is that this has not been optimized at all. So with your help, I think we can do even better than this. So if you have some ideas on how to improve this even more, please let me know and we can always follow up with another testing video. On a somewhat related topic, the last two testing videos performed very poorly on YouTube and that's either because nobody wants to see them or because I've somehow upset the YouTube algorithm. So if you haven't already seen those videos, I will put a link up above there. And of course, if you enjoy these videos and you want to help the channel to grow, make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already, and I can keep on making content like this and even better in the future. Thank you to each of my patrons for helping to support this channel and making these videos possible. And of course, if you want to help support this channel as well, there is a link down there below. I hope you found this video interesting and maybe entertaining as well. Take care and I hope to see you 
on the next one. Mm-hmm.